amigos, hola amigas, welcome, bienvenido, croissui, salam, welcome to the channel, y'all, cheshtan yakshumash, long time no see you guys, so I hope you are all very, very well. Today's video is something that I've done in the past, I've even done it on somebody else's channel for them, which is in the video description below, if you go down and check out, there's a link there to a segment of a video that I did for my mate Vince. So go and check it out and go and check out his channel as well because it is really, really good. Bit of a bit of a professional bodger, that's what he kind of is. And, and he would actually laugh when, if he heard that because just like me, I'm also what I'd class as a professional bodger. So today's video is going to be doing with retro writing. So what are we going to be retro writing today? Let's take off the cloth. I have got these two door seal, door covers from um, the Laundry Centre. Links to his channel is also in the video description. So he's given me these two door fronts to try and rescue. They have gone really, really yellow. And what we're going to be trying to do is to uh, correct that and make them bright again, make them white. This one is stamped on the back, it's Hoover. It's made of ABS and it's from 1976. Will this one have the details on it? Absolutely nothing whatsoever. So I can't identify this particular door, uh, door front doesn't say there is a slightly bit of discoloration there where the where the white is showing through what what it should have been originally so i've got these two things to retro bright i'm gonna only have to be able to do them one at a time i have my plastic container here and this is perfect for the size to fit them in to uh, be able to retro bright them so i think we will go for the We'll go for the no brand one first. So before I do anything, I have to give it a bit of a clean because it's absolutely manky. So let's get you guys a little bit closer and let's start this process. So this process of retro writing that I'm doing is quite funnily, quite controversial because so many people have their own opinions on how they've done their retro writing in the past um, and how they do it and this, that and the other. There are some methods that I've tried from suggestions from people and it's absolutely rubbish. So I only listen to reputable people that I know, reputable sources. For example, Epic Guy. Sam, Sam Watson of um, Beko 1987. And I have found that this works really well. It's not cheap to get some of the equipment for the, the UV lights, for example. They're quite expensive. They were about 50 to 60 pounds each. But it means that I can retrobrite all year round which is really good because of um, living in the UK where we don't get much sun so I'm gonna make sure that I get as much of the marks off as possible Be warned, do this on your own head, be it. Right, so we've got that pretty much nice and clean. That'll do nicely. So the next thing I have to do now is take some foil and my box. Got my sheet of aluminium sunny side up. 
absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to put a strip of the foil around the outside of reflection. Now that fits in absolutely perfect. Uh, I'm hoping that the heat will do both sides, but this is the side that we need to keep um, up basically. So the only problem is going to be now that this is going to float and you don't want it to float. It has to be submerged. So I have to find a way of keeping this submerged, but then also not um, nothing that's going to sort of like block any part of it because then it'll be um, patchy. So luckily I can see some screw points here. So let me go get something and I'll come back to you once I've uh, found a little solution. So the liquid I'm using is this. This is hydrogen peroxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide food grade 12%. This stuff burns. I can't tell you enough how you need to wear gloves with this. I've done bits in the bobs without gloves before. It's not a pretty picture. So what I'm going to do now is pour this liquid into the container. I don't know how many I'm going to need. I have four. But we have to make sure that, that this is submerged. It's already starting to float. Grr! Now this is yeah, it's definitely deep enough. I just need to make sure that it's going to stay submerged. Because that is the trick. The trick is getting it submerged to stay under the level of the solution. Now this is going to bubble up and fizz. As you can see there, it's already starting to do so. So I can tell you now it's going to float. And it looks like the, uh, the weights have come off. Grrr! What I've done is I've just put three weights to hold it down and um, I'm going to come back in, you know, th certain times every couple of hours uh, to check on how it's doing. And then I will move the weights around and just basically just to see how it goes. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. It's not ideal, I have to admit, but unfortunately, that's all I can do for now. So I'm going to fold. The excess foil over. I have my clear perspex lid to put on the top, like so. Now, um, a lot of people have commented to me about um, perspex stopping the UV right light from going through. I have absolutely no idea what type of plastic this is. But it, I haven't had any issues with it blocking the UV light and preventing it from working. Apparently, some of these um, plastics 
can stop the process. Can I, I don't understand the science of it, so I would double check on that because I don't know what this is. I'm sure I just bought a piece of Perspex, but I'm not 100% sure what it's made up of. So I'm not going to be able to tell you, unfortunately, but that is something to be aware of as well. So what I'm going to do now is I've got two UV lights. Both of them are 30 watts. So I'm going to place them where they're going to go. And have them touch in like that on top. So I need to now block out this section with foil, shiny side down, so make sure that all the um, the light is getting into that area. So I'm going to take pieces of cling uh, foil and fit them on. Okay, so we have it all set up now like a giant sandwich. In the recycling. Okay, I'm going to plug these into my extension cable. And voila, they are now on. And that's basically it. Patience is the biggest time. It's time, so yeah, just be patient. So I'm going to come back to these in, well, before I go to bed. It's almost 3 p.m. I'm going to take a look at these before I go to bed and um, see how it is cooking. But if not, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so it's the next day. Later in the afternoon. Let's take a look. unplug it <laughs> wow well I don't know if you can see already but uh-huh let me get my cloth I'm gonna wipe the condensation off the perspex and again this stuff is very corrosive so be careful pop that down there wow let's take off this clamp Look at the difference. So I think that worked. This is the next one that we're going to be doing. And this one is from the Hoover. But this one from the Indeset, I believe it was from. That is now. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but that is just incredible. It needs a good clean. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got a bowl here. So I'm going to scrub it inside with some Jif. Possibly give it a bit of a polish. So the next one we're going to be working on is this one, which is the Hoover. Now this is going to be a bit of a bugger to um, get in there and not float. I will use my clamp. Let's remove this. Just trying to use the magnets to keep it down. So I can definitely use the clamp on one side. Is use this weight to keep it down there. 
Now that is going to cast a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave this overnight in this position. And then tomorrow I will move that weight around. And then hopefully that will give it a bit more to do that patch. We'll come back to it tomorrow. So I'll show you anyway. Right. Let's get these lights back on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and clean this one up and I'll come back to you and show it to you. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I got it back and here we go. There it is. And that is, that is new. That is a new white plug that I got recently got from Ikea. And that it is compared to what it was before. And you can see it is just, but it's white. It's back to its original color. And it's been, the inside of it is pretty good too, considering uh, it was for the reflection of the UV light, which is why it's important to put the foil down on the bottom to try and cause a reflection. So it's done the bottom of it without having to turn it over and have it specifically underneath the UV light. Uh, plus also it's the chemical reaction as well. So fantastic, there we go. That is the first one completely done and dusted. I'm chuffed with that, absolutely chuffed with it. The marks of it from where the door handle, it was on, on one of these sides, anyway, I can't remember. So what I'm gonna do now, because it's important to protect it, is I'm gonna smear some of this onto it, which is the Aerospace Protector 303. I'm gonna put some of this on. So if I just take a cloth, Spray some on the cloth. And then just cover that. It only, it only, like this uh, protect, it really only protects it for a couple of weeks. But I like to put it on it now as soon as I finished doing some retro break. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. So I'm just covering that. So what we will do is come back tomorrow and now take a look and see what the one underneath looks like. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, so this should be done. Let's unplug it. This can now go in the recycling. Take the weights off. It's whitened it, I will say that, on both sides, but I will need to clean it. Let me go and wash it, because it needs washing. Yeah, that's just marks on it. Right, let me go and give this a bit of a wash, and then we'll come back and um, sort it out. Okay, so I'm back and there is still a tiny little bit of discoloration just on this portion for some reason. I don't know why the rest of it has come up really good. I mean, the color transformation is absolutely incredible on it, but I'm gonna try this with some of the peroxide cream and the UV lights just to see if I can get rid of just this little bit of discoloration. But we'll come back to that. So the next thing we're gonna be retrobiting, uh, let me remove this foil from around the side. 
And what I'm going to do is take out the water from this container because I need a different container, a uh, different plastic container, a longer one. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to retrobrite is this. This is the front of my Miele dishwasher that's faded in patches. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. Now... This has got a nice little clear hole there, so... <coughs> I'm going to try and work out... ...some way... Maybe all I need is just this. a week maybe I'll try that Try that. That should hopefully keep it all in place. Just do it the nice easy way, I think. Now I've got my Perspex lid. On this one, I'm going to space the lights. Like that. Okay, lights are on. Let's leave that cook overnight. About 15 hours cooking. Let's unplug it. That is fantastic. It's taken off all the discoloration and looks like new again. Fantastic. I'm really chuffed with that. I'm just going to go and um, wash it up and then I'll come back to you. So there we go. We have these three pieces now retrobrighted. The staining has gone completely off the Miele dishwasher panel. So I can put that back on and just leave it there ready for installing the dishwasher when our current one goes. So that is fine. These then belong into um, the laundry center. These are now being brought back to life. How long they will last, I do not know. But as you can see, it hasn't caused any damage to the plastics whatsoever. They're still the same. Hasn't made them any brittler or weakened them. Uh, this one hasn't come out as good as this one, but uh, they are a heck of a lot better than what they are. I will wrap them up nice and safe and give them back to the laundry center when I see you next. So I hope you've enjoyed. That's what I do for retrobiting, and that is the beauty of doing this process that I have, is that the fact that I can do this now 
at any time of the year, winter, summer, no matter what, I can do this um, lightning with the um, hydrogen peroxide. So I hope you've enjoyed. Just a quick one for you guys today, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, y'all. Oh, 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 oh,